So, I, so I was stationed there. I was stationed there in, in Humphrey and I was there doing that transition when they were actually, they actually had a plans and actually in construction and they were acquiring more land around. It was more land around it. There was a, also a protest, uh, around that time, but, uh, that was around the time I was leaving when the, the big protests happened. Uh, where people were being displaced from the area uh, to expand that base in and camp country. And that was the Korean government that paid for it, correct? The Korean government paid for that. And it also pays, if I'm not mistaken, I'll have to check my figures. It pays the U.S. military another billion dollars a year just for the privilege of being occupied by U.S. troops. Oh, there's a there's a book, but I don't know if, you, uh, if you've seen it by Michael Hudson, uh, economist. He talked, it's a book called Super Imperialism, mm-hmm. where he talks about that. He talks about that that the host countries are usually the ones that are, are putting the bill for hosting a military, a U.S. military installation in their own, in their own, uh, country. And if you think about it, there's a roughly, uh, there's not really a, a, a concrete number roughly from, from 800 to a thousand military bases around the, around the world in about 130 countries around the world. Right. And if each of those countries are footing the bill, you can imagine, and a lot of those countries are in poor countries. You can imagine, you know, what kind of industry this is, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And then the other piece I'll add to that is the Pentagon has never passed an audit in its life, right? Uh, The Pentagon budget has never, never, ever been fully audited. They've never passed, uh, uh, you know, an audit. And so here we have uh, large amounts of money uh, circulating, large amounts of money going to the military industrial complex, large amounts of money being paid by quote unquote, the host countries that are essentially paying a protection racket. And then, uh, and then, you know, getting polluted and getting their land stripped away. I think it's 170 countries. If you talk about countries that have lily pads or operations in them. So it's a huge footprint. It literally is an empire, right? It is, uh, a, it's an empire of bases. And inside that, as you mentioned earlier with Camp Humphreys in Pyeongtaek, when they were expanding the base, um, that is traditionally farming land. And South Korea is not a big country. It needs every inch of farming land that it needs. Those were rice paddies. And they were farmers who were making their livelihood, you know, through farming, through growing rice. And the uh, Korean government, under the prompting of the U.S. military, decided that it was going to expand a base, create the largest base uh, on the planet. At currently, I think it's two, three thousand acres. I mean, it's it's enormous. Uh, and so all of these farmers were being displaced, and they fought tooth and nail to retain their land, to retain their livelihood, to retain their dignity. And of course, they were beaten back and, you know, throttled and taken out. Uh, same thing with the THAAD, uh, with the THAAD uh, installation, uh, same thing, you know, massive protests against that. Uh, it still happens. Uh, they're still protesting the THAAD uh, military base, but, you know, uh, once again, they don't have uh, their own sovereignty. In fact, the previous president, Moon Jae-in, said that he was opposed to having THAAD on South Korean soil. Uh, and at that point, they were just plans. And after he became president, the South Korean military brought the THAAD missiles onto South Korean, sto- onto South Korean soil, installed them anyway, and they did not notify the president, who is the, the head of the army, right? They did not notify, the South Korean military did not notify the president of South Korea that they had brought in strategic weapons. And they were asked why. And they said, well, you know, we discussed this with the U.S. military and we had a non-disclosure agreement uh, with the U.S. military. And therefore, we we did not feel it was necessary to tell our commander in chief. I think that gives you a sense of you know, how the system works in South Korea. 